Well, hello everyone. This is your friendly neighborhood pastor coming to you from Christ the King Lutheran Church here in Escadama, Michigan. We're getting ready for this weekend, which is the second Sunday after the Epiphany. And our text is from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Jesus' encounter with uh, Philip and Nathaniel, a couple, some of the first apostles, uh, disciples that followed Jesus. So as always, let me go ahead and read this passage for you and give you some thoughts and reflections on it. St. John writes, The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Philip saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. During this time after Epiphany, we, um, we, we go towards the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And so we find ourselves for the next five weeks or so uh, in the beginning of, uh, well, John's gospel this week, but for the next four weeks, it'll be in the beginning of Mark's gospel, which is setting the stage, of course, for Lent. Um, but Epiphany is all about the the unveiling, um, the the uh, God pulling back the curtain of, of the cosmic uh, drama of redemption, and, and it's it's happening here and now in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And, and we get a sense of it right away here with Jesus calling a couple of his disciples, Philip and Nathaniel. Just previous to this in John's Gospel, we heard about John the Baptist pointing away from himself to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and he points away from himself also his disciples, uh, namely Andrew and Peter, um, and, and Andrew and Peter then tell Philip and James, uh, excuse me, Philip and Andrew, uh, and Philip, well, Philip, excuse me, Philip and Nathaniel. Philip then will tell Nathaniel more about this, and so you see this uh, kind of the dominoes falling with with what God is doing, um, bringing people to His Son, and it, it's just a beautiful passage because here we have someone named Philip. Philip will make an appearance. Um, throughout the gospel, he'll, he'll appear in chapter 6, chapter uh, 14, and also in chapter 12 where he um, is kind of the, the, the go-between, so to speak. And in this case, he's the go-between between Jesus and, and, and Nathaniel. Uh, but it's a great passage because it, it lifts up um, Jesus finding us. In one sense, the disciples find Jesus. Um, like Philip says, we, we found him, right? This is the long-awaited for and promised Messiah. He's here. He's here. Let's go see him. Let's go listen to him. Let's go follow him. Let's see what he is all about. Uh, but in on a deeper level, um, it's all about Jesus finding them. And, and that's one of the great gifts of of John's gospel as well, is that John's gospel is full of of subtle irony. It's full of double entendres where it means this, but it also means that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a gospel marked often by misunderstanding, and so Jesus then will need to clarify things. And, and we get a little bit of that here, um, because in, in this chapter, in, the, in these verses rather, we see all these titles being laid out for Jesus. Um, Nathaniel and Philip lay out titles like Rabbi, Messiah, uh, the King of, of the Jews, the King of Israel. And then Jesus says at the very end of this passage uh, that he is the Son of Man, that the self-designation um, that he uh, gets from, certainly, from, from Scripture, from Daniel chapter 7. And so all these different titles, and Jesus is, is he's trying to t tell these folks, uh, these people, the disciples, um, and people throughout the gospel who he is, and, and people, some people understand, some people don't. That's because some people are drawn to the light, some people stay in the darkness, some people want to be enlightened, but other people will stay in ignorance and in disbelief, and so you get this uh, teeter-trotting, this going back and forth, and, and which makes John's gospel just a really, really uh, fun gospel to read, too. It's a very deep, engaging gospel, but it's also very simple, um, 
because as John says at the end of his gospel, this is written so that you may believe, um, or also that you may be that you may continue to believe. Uh, it could be an aorist verb, um, believing, or it could be a present tense verb, which is uh, an, an ongoing kind of a thing. Uh, and so John minces no words here, and he he says this is this is what it's all about. It's all about following Jesus. Uh, another important thread in, in the beginning of this gospel here is how Jesus is the fulfillment of, of the promises of Scripture. And he lifts up, for example, uh, Philip lifts up that this is the guy that Moses was talking about. This is the prophet uh, whom Moses was pointing to. He is the fulfillment of all the Scriptures. And we heard about this uh, a little earlier in John's gospel where, where John says um, that he is full of uh, grace and truth. Moses came to give the law, but Jesus came to give uh, and reveal grace and truth and, and to reveal, to make known the, the, the bosom, the heart of the Father. Um, so you've got Jesus fulfilling all of those promises of Scripture that, that what, what the Old Testament alluded to in types and shadows is now becoming a reality in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. That everything that the prophets longed to see, that Moses longed to see, that God was at work way back when is now happening here and now in Jesus Christ. And so we need to listen, we need to hear, we need to see, uh, see through the eyes of faith, hear with the ears uh, that God has given to us um, because, because God's up, up to something here. And what's God up to? Well, we get a little bit of a hint of this at the end of this passage where Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, um, you, Philip, Nathaniel, the other disciples, you will see heaven open and the angels of God descending, ascending and descending upon the Son, <clears throat> excuse me, the Son of Man. And what Jesus is saying here, and he'll also say this in chapter 2 about the temple, is that basically this is, this is if you want to find God, um, you've got to come to me. It's all about me. Uh, God's activity, his revelation, um, the Father's purposes for this world, for salvation, it's all about me. Uh, and John's gospel does a really good job lifting that up, that it's all about Christ. It's all about who he is, what he has come to do, what he is teaching, uh, who he is from all eternity, the divine son of God who is now made known in Jesus. Uh, he is the suffering servant who has come to give his life as a ransom for many. He has come to die, but also uh, to give life, to give life, to give light, to bring forgiveness, to give the Holy Spirit. And, and there's so much going on here in John's gospel, just in the beginning, but okay. Certainly can't get into all of that now, but enjoy this reading from John's Gospel. Again, we're looking at John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. It's a beautiful, beautiful text engaging us and getting us off on a right foot in this new year of 2018. So may God bless you and lead you and guide you as you dive into his word this week and always. God bless. Take care. We'll see you next time.